What we're going to do is we're going to perform the equipotential bonding for the gas and water supply to the main consumer unit and the equipment we need is here. Electrical tape, electrician's pliers, electrician's lock knife, flat file, uninsulated crimping tool, range of screwdrivers, posi number two and a slotted, an eye hole crimp uninsulated, the earthing clamp and some steel wire wool. We're going to work with the steel wire wool first. The objective of this is to help us get a really good earth connection on our pipes. As you can imagine, the water is coming up here, so it's coming in here, you have the main water stopcock, and then it goes off to your supplies. If you recall, it must always go after the stopcock. And what we need to do is we need to look at the pipe and we need to make it so that when we put our clamp on, we're going to get onto the copper. And you've got all this dirt and grime on the actual pipe at the moment. And the idea of the steel wire wall is, as you can see, clean it up. Now, if you remember, to do it both sides and clean up as best as you possibly can. We've done that now, which means we move on to the actual clamp. The clamps notoriously come as this style. There are two types, indoor and outdoor, and you need to verify which one you're gonna use when you come to fix them. The first thing I usually do is take off the most important part of it, which is the tag. As you can see here, safety electrical connection do not remove. And it's very, very important that you make sure that this is always on the clamp and is never removed. What I will do first is remove the main screw holding this on. And what I tend to do is I actually like to put the actual sign on through the hole here so it's actually attached to the actual clamp like so. And what I'm going to do now is just remove the nut and allow the nut to screw all the way up onto the screw. I then place the clamp around the item in question. So you're holding it in place. And this is where you move on to your next tool, which is a slotted screwdriver. And once you're holding this in place, tighten up the screw so it starts to bind and push the metal tag I've just pushed through onto the pipe. Now it's really, really important as you're tightening this up that you don't have any movement it is possible that if you over tighten in it, you could actually damage the pipe or the clamp and you don't want to do either of those two things. So the idea is to tighten this up as much as you possibly can so it doesn't move at all. It's one of those judgment calls that you have to make the decision as you're actually installing the clamp. The most important rule is that it doesn't actually physically move. I believe I'm near enough there. There we are. That's enough for that one. We're going to stop there. We're going to move on to the next part. We have the gas pipe coming in and the main control valve here. It goes through to the gas meter and then it goes into your house. And if you remember what the on-site site tells us, it must be always after the stopcock and before the T-junction. So thankfully, we have the copper pipe, which means we use the steel wire wall to clean up that pipe. We're moving the dirt, the grease, the grime, so we get a really good connection on there. There we have it. Well, you may find though, is that sometimes in someone's house, the pipes may be painted or actually come with their natural coating, like on this low carbon steel pipe. If this is there, it acts as a very good insulator and using steel wire wool just doesn't really clean it enough. This is where you move on to using a flat file. The idea, and I will demonstrate it at here, and this is just a demonstration, obviously you would always connect to this pipe, is that you would need to remove the paint. And as you can see, I'm already starting to succeed in this. Now it could be, if it's painted, and it's got maybe quite a few coatings of white paint, you might have to use the edge to scrape it up, 
But the idea is you just keep on rotating the actual file around the pipe until you've got all the way through to the seal. It does mean you're going to have to work a little bit at the back as well. This obviously takes time and practice. You may find when you get to a certain point, a little bit of steel wire wool, just to clean off any of the actual residues of paint and then you'll be able to put your clamp around that. Right, we're going to now attach our clamp. What I will do first is remove the actual label and I'll just pull it straight down. I then undo the nut, rotate it up, undo the screw. And it doesn't matter which hole you go through, place the screw back in. So I like to have it that the screw just protrudes through the slot that you're going to push the clamp through. I'll place the strap around through the slot I mentioned earlier. Pull it up tight using a slotted screwdriver. Make sure it's in the right place. Remember the clean part of the pipe. Clamp it on. Make sure it won't move anywhere and you're happy with it. And our clamps are installed. We're going to work with 10mm single CPC or green and yellow cable. One of the rules is that the idea is not to cut the cable between it. It's possible that you can run two separate conductors for this. One from the consumer MET to the gas pipe and one from the consumer MET again, main earthing terminal, to the water pipe. Alternatively, you can run just one, but the idea is never to cut the cable, and we're going to keep it continuous. There are two ways of connecting this cable to this clamp, and we're going to be using the actual securing device here. Now, the best method is use an eye hole crimp, which we will attach onto the end of the cable, making sure we have a mechanical tightness, and that is the best method. If you find yourself missing a couple of these from your toolkit, the other alternative is as I'm going to demonstrate. Use an electrician's knife, ring the sleeve in around the cable, and take off that sleeve in. And then, you have two ways of doing it. You can either make a hoop out of this, where you actually bend it all the way around, or my preferred option is to separate the strands into three and fours, using a pair of pliers, twist the strands together, and you make a pitchfork. <laughs> 